What would you say are the positive and negative effects of collectivist uh, cultures on mental health? I would say one of the 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 most positive thing and the most negative thing in collectivist cultures regarding mental health are the same thing. There's a social responsibility component. And so it's super helpful when the whole community comes together and is like, we need to support this person because they're part of who we are and they belong to us. Um, it's super negative when the collectivistic culture is like, no, hide everything. Nobody has to, nobody should know that you have like any type of mental health issue. So on the one hand, it's really great. On the other hand, it's really bad. Inherently, it's just what collectivistic cultures are. Like they're part, everybody's kind of part of this whole. And so it just kind of depends on the whole that you're a part of, right? If your family is the type of family that's like super, um, Oh, if you're not doing well, then all of us aren't doing well. So we really want you to do well. So we're going to support you in whatever mental health issue that you're dealing with versus other families where like, no, we have to maintain our face and like, we can't let other people know. And so it can be also very, very detrimental. So it really just, I think that it's, there's so much potential in this supportive and collective identity that we have, but it can also be so detrimental and negative um, just being able to find that balance of taking like the best parts of the collectivistic culture, the supportive, the belonging, and then taking away the, you have to conform kind of idea, you know? Um, so there's two sides of the same point. And so, uh, 